Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishnam. Hope you are all doing the final revision for the exam. I would like to give you a few tips to remember while writing the exam. As soon as you get the question paper, read the instructions very carefully. Understand which all questions you have to attend, in which way you have to attend, how much mark it carries, all these things you have to take into consideration. Second, once you start writing, start in the order, as far as possible, in the order itself. Suppose you want to start from the uh, 3 mark question or 5 mark question or case based question, make sure that you are writing the section very clearly. Before starting of each section, mention the section, whether it is section A, section B or so. After that, within that, don't change. For example, even if you are starting with section C, okay fine. But write all questions of section C together. Again, don't mix up. Suppose while writing, if you do not know one question, you know how much space it will take approximately. Leave that space and then continue. So that later you can come back and fill up that gap. Another thing, when you are writing the section, even if you are writing the section in the reverse order, starting from the last section towards the end, but within the section, write the number sequentially. When you write MCQ questions, Make sure that you are writing the option and the answer, including assertion reason questions. Write legibly and neatly. Present your answer very neatly. And write precise answers. Please avoid repetition and a confusion in your answers. Make it very clear. But very important to understand what is expected from you to answer. Because most of the students simply by reading the question, they write what they know. But more than that, it is important to read the question thoroughly to understand what is expected to write and you have to answer that. For case based questions and assertion reason questions, read the question repeatedly to avoid any mistakes. When you are drawing diagrams, use only pencils to draw the diagram and label with only pencils. And the diagram should neither be too large or too small. You can use a medium sized diagram. Uh, maybe three to four lines depending upon the length of the diagram. For example, if nephron and only are drawing, you may require more space. That adjust that. Biological diagram you can draw to a left side so that right side you will get some space for labeling. Labeling is very important for any diagram. And ray diagrams or a circuit diagrams when you are drawing, make sure that you are giving the direction using arrow marks. Ray diagram should be drawn with a proper sharp pencil and scale. When you are attempting numericals in physics, first you read the question twice and understand what all things are given. Then if you follow these steps, first write the information given using symbols and SI unit. If any value is not given in SI unit, make sure that you convert immediately into SI unit. After that, write what is to be found. For example, suppose if you want to find out image distance, then V is equal to question mark or F is equal to question mark. Third step, you apply the equation needed for that solving that particular question. After equation, substitute the values and find out your final answer. Once your final answer is ready, as a conclusion, you write the answer again. For example, especially in the case of uh, the light problems, they may ask you the size of the image, nature of the image, all this and position of the image. So literally write all these below the answer as a conclusion. Wherever necessary, draw diagram even if it is not asked. To substantiate your answer, if you require a diagram and you are thorough with the diagram, go for it. But always make sure to manage your time well. Whenever questions from heredity is asked, if it is a 3 mark question or 4 mark or 5 mark questions, please ensure that you are drawing the crows to show the answer. So first write the crows, derive the answer, then answer to the question. Now coming to the sub questions. There may be questions with a A part, B part, C part. Sometimes students write A, then you forget to write B and C or you don't mark B and C. In such questions, it's very important that you are writing A, B, C separately. 
Suppose the B answer already included in A, but still you have to rewrite it as B. Each part should be answered separately so that the examiner will evaluate accordingly. Otherwise, all the answer will be considered as A only if you don't mention B and C. So, again, the numbering. Some sub-questions may be given as A, B, C. Some questions may be given as 1, 2, 3. So, whatever is used in the question paper, the same pattern you have to follow. You should not make your choice there. And also, whatever number is used, the same number used there. Do not use Roman numerals or any other way of writing. According to your wish, it should be the same like the question paper. If you can write the answer point-wise, you write it point-wise only. After 3 mark or 5 mark questions and all, leave one or two lines so that one answer is separated from the other. Whenever you are doing heredity questions, make sure that you are writing the ratio at the end. When you write chemical equations, make sure that you are writing only balanced equations and also write the state of reactants and products as well. If it is an endothermic reaction, above the arrow you will be writing the heat, whereas if it is exothermic, in the product you will be writing heat. The same way when you write photosynthetic equation also, it should be balanced and above the arrow you have to write chlorophyll and sunlight. The same way if there is a catalyst in the case of nickel, palladium etc. or oxidizing agents like a potassium permanganate, acidified potassium dichromate or sulfuric acid as dehydrating agent, mention that on top of the arrow. Try to finish your answers at least 15 minutes before the end time so that you get time to review the question. While reviewing the question also, you follow these uh, steps, take the answer script and go through only the question number to ensure that you have written 1 to the last number. Each question is answered so that you will not miss anything. Then go with the question paper and see that each part of the question is also answered. After that, if you have confirmed that, then read through the question and answer. Don't simply read the answer. Each question has to be read again so that sometimes you may have uh, written the wrong answer. So go through like that. If you have done all this, you are ready to submit your paper. Stay calm and focused. Once you are reading in the beginning, maybe one or two questions you are not uh, aware of or you find it difficult or you don't remember immediately, don't panic. When you start writing, when you are answering other questions, automatically this might come to your mind. So hope for that and you have prepared well, trust in your preparation and be confident and present the answers very well and score well. May God bless you all.